What's up guys, Rogue9 here, and if you've played any Ubisoft game in the last few days, you may have been greeted with this rather ominous pop-up. Updated Uplay Terms of Service Ubisoft has updated its Terms of Use and Privacy Policy on May 12, 2020. You have until August 12, 2020 to read and accept the updated Terms of Use, and to read and acknowledge the updated Privacy Policy, at which point they will become effective. If you do not agree, you can stop using the service and request that we close your account on your Account Management page in the Account Information section and close your Ubisoft account. For more information about the changes made on the Terms of Use, please read our summary of the key changes. You can manage your privacy settings on the account management page. And then you have the option to accept the updated terms of use and confirm that you have read and understood the updated privacy policy, or you can basically fuck right off. And needless to say, Ubisoft telling you that you can basically go ahead and close your account if you don't like what they're doing, that kind of piqued my interest a little bit, and so I dug through the entire terms of use and the privacy policy, and in this video, I want to show you some of the most important features that stood out to me. Let's go take a look. Obviously, before we begin, it's worth me pointing out that both the terms of use and the privacy policy are legal documents, and I'm not a lawyer, thank goodness, because those guys are seriously the worst, and I'm not giving you legal advice. All I'm doing is highlighting to you some of the most important points that stood out to me in these documents and how they might affect you. If you have any concerns, do make sure that you read and understand these documents in full for yourself. Links will be in the description. But now let's go straight into the juicy terms of use. And one of the first things that really stood out to me is paragraph 1.3. The services and content are licensed to you, not sold. This means that we grant you a personal, limited, non-transferable and revocable right and license to use the service and access the content for your entertainment, non-commercial use subject to your compliance with these terms. And that in simple plain English means that when you buy a Ubisoft game, you don't actually own the game or the product as itself, you buy the license to be allowed to play it, and Ubisoft can at any point revoke that license, they can take away your right to play that game. And I mean, if you think about it, this kind of makes sense, right? If you break the rules, they can ban you from the game, you, they can take away your access. There's nothing really new in this. This has probably been in the, in the terms of use for quite a while, and it's probably something that all game developers use and game publishers, but it is still a very important point, especially when we get to the bans later. The fact is, whether you like it or not, you never ever purchase a product from Ubisoft, you purchase a license to use that product, and they can take that away. So far so good really, but the first real curveball we get comes only a short while later in paragraph 2.5 about multiple accounts. And this one, yeah, this one's gonna, yeah, mm, it's interesting, because here you go, you must not create multiple accounts, except if we specifically allow it. In such case, you acknowledge that you will close your additional account upon our request, or that we may terminate your additional account. And I have to say, yeah, this is nuts, right? A lot of people, especially when we're talking about Rainbow Six, a lot of people will have multiple accounts for multiple reasons. Content creators might have secondary accounts with different names so that they can play without being recognized, without being harassed, without being annoyed. Maybe stream might try to keep their identity hidden with additional accounts. Pro players have up to a dozen accounts each. And of course, there are many other reasons why you might want multiple accounts, right? Uh, what if you want to play with two different sets of friends? One set is high platinum or even diamond level, and then you have a group of real life friends who aren't that good, but you want to play together with them. So you have a secondary account that you play only with them so that you stay on the same MMR level and you can continue to play together. All of that makes sense. All of these are, in my eyes at least, very legitimate reasons. But yeah, fun fact, you're not allowed to own more than one account. Now, do I think that Ubisoft is about to terminate hundreds of thousands of duplicate Rainbow Six accounts? No, I don't think so. I don't think that's going to happen. But it's clearly in the terms of use. They could if they wanted to. And like the pop-up box right in the beginning told us, if we don't like it, we can basically go fuck right off. 
Paragraph 5.3 is the next one that is quite important to players because that lists the forbidden behaviors and it's a non-exhaustive list so there could be other behaviors that they can punish you for but here's at least a list of examples. Quite a few of these will of course have been in the previous terms of use but this is one of the sections that has been changed so there will be some new stuff in here. I'm not going to go over every single article here just the ones that stand out to me and number two is a decent one obviously it's it's quite clear creating and using inappropriate usernames or avatars is not allowed but you still see it you still see people trying to be sort of edgy with their avatars or usernames and well you're not really allowed to and they can close down your account if they wanted to Another thing that you see quite commonly is people impersonating others, right? The number of players that call themselves Bolo or Macy J or anything like that, that's not allowed either. You're not allowed to impersonate either Ubisoft staff or other players. And it, they don't have to be well-known players, but if you're impersonating anyone else, if you're using another user's name or avatar specifically with the intention of impersonating them without their consent, that again is against the rules. Paragraph 4 is also one of those that should be pretty clear to everyone. This is nothing new, but of course, abusing, harassing, or bullying other people through any Ubisoft communication service, whether that's in-game or on the forums or Reddit or wherever, is going to be punishable and can result in you having your account suspended or terminated. One thing that is interesting to mention in connection with this though is especially in-game chat, especially for Rainbow Six Siege. As we'll see later with the privacy policy, they store this and they reserve the right to store all of your in-game chat forever. And the fact is they can and will dig up old stuff if they have to. A prominent case recently was Doki, the EU Rainbow Six Pro player, who was perma-banned on his main account for Rainbow Six because of stuff he said in the game and it kind of surfaced, they dug through it, there was a complaint made, they checked and it's like, yeah, this is not okay, this, this stuff is rather nasty. So he got a perma-ban and then he also was not able to compete in Pro League for a full six months. And of course, f for anyone who isn't a pro player, yeah, you're not going to be risking your career. You're just risking, well, you're, you're not just risking your account. We'll get to that later. There is more to this. But um, there are other consequences. It's that stuff that we don't normally maybe think about. Like, uh, for instance, uh, recently I saw people on Twitter, uh, Ubisoft staff, advertising open roles. They wanted to hire new staff. And then sort of after a few days, there was a, a response tweet that said, oh, by the way, if you have a history of toxic behavior or cheating in Rainbow Six Siege, guess what? You don't even need to apply. We do check for that. And we've had to filter out applicants that, that wanted to have this job that would have been suitable. So people lost job opportunities because of stuff they said in the game or because of cheating or other stuff. It's, yeah, it's stuff that we don't normally think about. Like the worst thing you usually think is, okay, I've done something nasty in the game, I'm going to lose my account. But if you ever in future then do think, hey, I would, I would, I love Rainbow Six, I would like to work on this, here's a role that I'm qualified for, I'm going to send in an application, and then they respond to you with, yeah, sorry, but two years ago in the in-game chat while playing a match in Rainbow Six, you said this and this and that, so yeah, no, we're not going to hire you. Like, wouldn't that suck? Yeah, the summary there is there's consequences we might not even think about, so yeah, do be more conscious in future, I guess. Paragraph number five here is, it's, it's a bit weird. It's a bit odd. Like it, it talks about minors endangerment and specifically mentions grooming. Like that's a crime. What, how do you need to include a crime in your terms of use? It, it, uh, it, it confuses me. I, I, I really, I'm almost shocked that this has to be included here. Yeah. Don't commit crimes using any kind of Ubisoft communication. Don't use the in-game chat to groom minors, you fuck nut. <laughs> Holy shit, I, that's all I could say to that. The next few paragraphs are pretty straightforward and they don't apply to most people. Like again, there's, there's, there's crimes, don't do crimes, don't intercept anyone's data or don't leak anyone's personal information, don't uh, infringe on anyone's intellectual property rights, don't build hacks essentially, don't sell, rent, market, arrange, modify, decompile, assembly, reverse engineer, translate, adapt and blah blah blah. So basically don't pirate our product, yes of course. 
And then there's don't modify distort block or abnormally burden or disrupt or slow down any of the normal functioning of the game. Essentially, they're talking about DDoSing. Don't DDoS the game. Yeah, of course not. Don't transmit any virus or Trojan horse. Okay, again, we're, we're on cybercrime here. Don't do crimes through Ubisoft services. All right. Uh, number 12, yeah, that's all about cheating. Essentially, that's where we get into the point of cheating. Don't use auto or macro programs. Don't use cheats, hacks, bots, scripts, trainer programs, or software applications that allow you to cheat. And number 14 basically goes back over that and says don't tamper in any way to give yourself or your teammates an unfair advantage with wall hacks or aimbots or anything else. Yeah, nothing new in any of that, but... Paragraph number 15, I think, is quite interesting and I do believe this is a new one because it expressly prohibits the exploitation of another broadcaster's live broadcast in order to gain an unfair advantage or harass a broadcaster in-game, such as stream sniping. They mention stream sniping, obviously this also includes queue sniping. It's funny how it actually starts out with don't exploit another broadcaster's live broadcast. What they really mean is don't exploit another player's live broadcast. I don't see why they say another broadcaster's because that kind of implies that we're all broadcasters. And I think that's that's just a miswording. So they're brand new, brand new terms and conditions. And that doesn't make sense. Yeah, that's just a it's a minor mistake. They mean players. They don't mean broadcasters. Not all of us are broadcasters, but the point is still clear. Stream sniping is now expressly against the rules and there can be consequences. Of course, the question I've seen many people come up with straight away is how are they going to police this? What are they going to use to be able to identify stream snipers? And I think that's that's sort of kind of beside the point at this stage. This isn't about what are they going to do, this is about making it against the rules in the first place. Can you do things to get away with it? Like, I don't know, using a different Twitch name or logging into Twitch anonymously? Sure, you can do that. You can, if you really, really want to use someone's stream against them to cheat and give yourself an advantage, then first of all, you're a bit of a sad little man or woman, whatever the case may be. And please don't even give me the, oh, but they're streaming, it's their own fault. They're bringing this up. No, you're cheating, you're choosing to cheat. Don't put it on anyone else, full stop. And yes, you might still be able to get away with it, but the fact now is that it is against the rules. It is officially against the rules and you can, if you get caught, get punished for it. And sure, number 15 here, it probably doesn't affect most people, right? The percentage of streamers amongst the general population of players is tiny by comparison, and most players are also not stream snipers, so this only affects a small portion of the player base. What is far more interesting, and I think really, really important to note, is article number 16. Because this is stuff that many players might actually do without realizing that they're breaking the rules. Basically, this paragraph tells us that anything that interrupts the general flow of gameplay is against the rules. And this can include, but is not limited to, being away from your keyboard, or farming, advertising or soliciting other products, or in-game harassment or bad sportsmanship, which can include team killing, rage quitting, blocking another player's actions, or any other in-game behavior meant to disrupt or interrupt the general flow of gameplay. And I think, yeah, some of this makes complete sense. Like, if there's a battle pass going on and someone's farming points by just going into a match, jiggling the mouse every couple of minutes, and doing their homework on the side, so yes, you're losing, but it doesn't matter because you get points for losing anyway. If anyone's doing that, that's farming. That's not something you're supposed to do because it disrupts the experience of other players. And the same, of course, goes for grief if someone's trying to play the game and you're just destroying their gadgets or you keep hustling around them or crouching in front of them or blocking them from moving or anything like that makes sense. Some of the stuff though, I don't know. Like if I look back through my playing history of Rainbow Six Siege, have I ever team killed someone who was purposefully trying to annoy me? Yes, yeah. Like, it happens. Do friends team kill each other now and then as a joke? Yes, that happens as well. Uh, and in fact, I can also say that if I'm dumped into a casual match that is already in the third round or the second round and it's just not looking good, do I just turn around and quit straight away? Sometimes, yes. Like, I don't feel an obligation to stay there. And, and it can go even further. Like, if it's a match that's just not going well and the only voice comms I'm getting from my team is, 
is harassment or them just being annoying, then do I quit out of a game? Yes, I will. But the simple fact is, according to the new rules, this is no longer allowed and can result in sanctions. Another thing that has been quite common in Rainbow Six Siege in the past is the exploitation of glitches and bugs to provide an unfair advantage over other users. And the reason why glitching was such a huge problem was because it was seen as not being against the rules. Yes, it's cheating, but it's using problems in the game itself to cheat, and therefore, well, it's not covered by the rules, we can go ahead and cheat. And for a long time, Ubisoft didn't really take any action against glitches. But that that did change a while ago, glitches were banned from the game, at least temporarily banned, and now it's in the rules. If you use glitches as an advantage or to disrupt the game in any other way, you are facing sanctions. Paragraph number 18 is basically all about boosting, and you'd think, of course, yeah, we know that boosting is against the rules, and boosters and people who are using boosting services have been banned for quite a while now, but it's still worth looking into some of the nuances. Of course, Teaming up with cheaters is against the rules and you're going to get punished for that. But here's another thing. Creating an alternative account in order to team up with newcomers or less experienced users in order to unfairly help them increase their level or statistics is against the rules. So it's not just about teaming up with cheaters, but if you're teaming up with a more experienced player with the purpose of getting boosted to a higher level, that is also against the rules. Paragraph number 20 says that you're not allowed to access or aim to access parts of the service not authorized by us. That basically covers data mining. If you're looking at events early or looking at cosmetics early because they're already in the game, that's not allowed. But also unlocking charms or stuff like if you're running around with a dev skin, that again can get you banned. Quite a lot of the following paragraphs are almost duplicates to stuff we saw earlier, like we've already seen that piracy is not allowed, and then they kind of cover it again in Article 21. I don't know why they keep repeating themselves, but I guess it must be a legal thing. One thing I think out of the remaining paragraphs that is interesting though is number 28, because I see that happening quite frequently as well. Buying, selling, renting, sharing, lending, trading, or in any other way transferring your account is not allowed. If you see someone trying to sell you their old account with a whole bunch of amazing skins in it, you're not allowed to buy it and they're not allowed to sell it. When it comes to the sanctions they can apply to you, this is all pretty straightforward. Of course, they can start out with warnings or temporary bans, or of course, going all the way to permanent bans. And yeah, no surprises there. I think one of the main things to notice in all of this language is that they talk about the account, the entire Uplay account. So if you do anything in Rainbow Six Siege, in theory, they could close down your Uplay account and you would lose access to all of your games. Uh, I don't actually know if that's what happens right now, or if you just lose access to your to your Siege account and the rest of the games are still there, but the new terms of service make it perfectly clear that they could, if they wanted to, block your entire account depending on your actions. In paragraph number 8, they talk about the termination of the account and what reasons they can use against you, and of course, if you violate these terms, so if you break any of the rules, they could terminate your account. That's obviously clear, but I think the interesting thing here to note is that they can also terminate your entire Uplay account for any other reason in relation to your actions in or outside of the services. Any other reason is what they've put in their terms and conditions, any other reason. So uh, let's say you're frustrated with Rainbow Six Siege at the moment and you see a lot of talk about it on Twitter and then you decide to send a nasty direct message to someone who you know is a developer. That can get you banned. That can get not only get you banned from Rainbow Six Siege, but it can get your entire Uplay account suspended. Don't do stuff like that. Any action you take, whether it's on a Ubisoft forum or anywhere else, if you say something on Twitter, on Facebook, if you say something in person, just one single frustrated nasty comment on Reddit is all it takes and you could lose your account. When you're on the internet, it's really easy to forget that you're not just shouting something at a screen, at a forum. There are other people sitting on the other side of that. And the thing is, like, it's not just about could you lose your account, could you be punished for this? Just maybe sometimes take a breath, stop and think before you take action. It's so easy to sometimes say stuff on the internet that you wouldn't say in real life. 
and maybe it's just something that we need to get used to, that we need to think about and be aware of. The final point here that almost flies under the radar but is really, really important is right at the end. Should you have more than one account, we reserve the right to suspend or close all of your accounts once one has been suspended or closed by us under this process. And I don't know if this is new, if this is an addition to the terms and conditions, but it's definitely something that I never realized. I always thought that all of your actions were tied to your account. So if you own a PlayStation or an Xbox and a PC and you play, you play Rainbow Six on PC and Xbox or PC and PlayStation or all three of them, if you do something stupid on your PC account, I always assumed that's just that account and then you can go away and you can play on your PlayStation or Xbox and nothing happens. Or you could even buy another copy of the game and you could create another account and you can play there. But it says it right here, multiple accounts across multiple platforms can be affected by the actions you take on any one of them. And that also includes future accounts if you go ahead and you buy a new copy of Rainbow Six Siege, you start up a new account that could, in theory, be closed down immediately because of what you did in your previous account. Something I didn't know about and something you definitely might want to keep in mind. And those are the most interesting parts of the new terms and conditions. I also looked into the new privacy policy and almost all of it is the standard stuff like we use we use cookies on our websites and blah 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 yeah all of this text is pretty straightforward something that is worth highlighting again that i also mentioned earlier is that they can and will keep a lot of your data for as long as they need to and that can include all of your entire chat history in any given game. It can include stuff like your account identifier, account name, email address, game data, IP address, and identifiers of your device. So basically hardware IDs, anything they need to apply a sanction, they will keep as long as they need to apply that sanction. And obviously, if you've got a permanent ban and they need to enforce that in the future, they give themselves the right to keep this information forever. And one final interesting thing doesn't really affect you as a player, but I thought this was quite neat, is that they will store your game data to improve the experience and the security of the services. And that data can include achieved game levels, rewards, rankings, completed game missions, statistics including the game time or the use of various features, as well as the data associated with any bugs or malfunctions. And I personally find that actually really interesting. If I go back in time and I think back to Assassin's Creed 3, Arguably, probably the weakest in the series. I didn't particularly like it, but I remember playing it and one of the things I did really like was sort of the, the 18th century boat missions, the stuff you did on the boat. And I thought, I remember thinking at that time, oh my god, I wish the next Assassin's Creed had more of this, had more boat stuff. That would be amazing. And then they came out and made Assassin's Creed Black Flag. I just, I still remember this to this day, like being blown away how the one thing that I thought, oh my god, wouldn't that be amazing? They went ahead and did it. And funny fact is, I was talking to a Ubisoft employee about this a while ago, and he told me like, oh yeah, yeah, we saw from the in-game telemetrics that players were spending a lot more time on the boat than they actually needed to for the story mission. They just kept going back to it. And so we decided to make a pirate game with more boat stuff. Yeah, and I think that's just a really neat example of how detailed and intricate the information is that they gather and how they use it to actually make better games. But that's it. Apart from that, the privacy policy didn't really strike me as particularly interesting or relevant. Obviously, it's important to know how they use your data, but there's nothing unusual in any of that. And there you have it. Going through the terms and conditions was quite interesting and some of it really did surprise me. Who would have thought that having multiple accounts is against the rules and they can just ask you to close them or force you to close them at any time? Yikes! Which of these topics that we discussed surprises or worries you the most? Leave your comments below and I look forward to seeing your perspective. Other than that, many thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you in the next episode.